Lev Semyonovich Vygotsky was born in Western Russia in 1896. Vygotsky would go on to graduate college from Moscow University with a degree in law. In the year 1925, he did a first research project involving psychology, which would catapult him into a career as a psychologist. He tragically died in 1934 of tuberculosis, and the Russian government hid his works. Vygotsky's findings were released after the Cold War, and his theories on language and thought, as well as how children go about solving problems, have greatly impacted Russian schools and numerous other psychological theories. Vygotsky believed that children construct knowledge and do not passively reproduce what is presented to them. Learning is more than mirroring. It also involves learners creating their own representations of new information. For Vygotsky, the social context influences more than just attitudes and beliefs. They have profound influence on how we think as well as what we think. While the content and processes that we use in thinking of a culturally determined Vygotsky did believe that there is a similar structure of the mind in all humans. He believed that there are two levels of mental functioning, lower and higher. The lower mental functions consist of such abilities as reactive attention, reacting to a loud noise or bright colored objects, associate memory, as we learn to stop at red lights, and sensory motor thought. The higher mental processes are unique to humans, passed down to generations by teaching and learning. The area between the level of independent performance and the level of assisted performance is the zone of proximal development. Not only the assistance used by the child needs to be intentionally provided by an adult, but Gatsby believed that a child can perform on a higher level to any type of the social interaction, interaction with peers as equals with imaginary partners or with children of other developmental levels. Obviously, there are concepts and skills beyond the child's current zone of proximal development. For instance, a four-year-old cannot be taught calculus even by the most gifted teacher. Language is both the transmitter of these cultural tools and the most important of them. According to Vygotsky, language is a mechanism for thinking, the most important mental tool. Language is the means by which information is passed from one generation to another. When you can see young children learn about rhymes in the classroom. We can think about and discuss things that have happened, will happen, and even things that might never happen with language. It is language that all cultures have passed on the higher mental functions that enable us to make sense of our world. The more knowledgeable other is exactly what it sounds like. It refers to a person who has a higher ability level or a better understanding of a certain concept, task, or process than the learner does. Many people think the more knowledgeable other has to be an older adult or teacher, but that is not always the case. In many instances, a child's peers may be the ones who have more experience or knowledge. For example, a child is more likely to know about the newest video game release than his or her parents. Sometimes the more knowledgeable other is not even a person at all. In a generation where technology is continuously expanding, the use of electronic support systems has appeared. New employees are able to use electronic performance support to learn more about their job. Students also have access to electronic tutors in educational settings. The only requirement of a more knowledgeable other, human or otherwise, is that they must have more knowledge about the topic than the learner does. Vygotsky personally believed that interactions with others creates an effective way of better developing skills and strategies. Because of this, teachers use cooperative skills and learning exercises so that the less competent children develop a clear understanding with the help of their fellow peers. Vygotsky explains the zone of proximal development as the distance between the actual development level as determined by independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance, or in collaboration with more capable peers. In other words, the zone of proximal development is the idea of using help from teachers and other students to help children who struggle with certain skills master difficult subjects. A very popular idea that helps shape the zone of proximal development is scaffolding. Note that Vygotsky himself did not ever use the term scaffolding, because Vygotsky died before his theory was not fully completed. In 1976, the idea of scaffolding was created by Wood et al. Let 
This term explains itself through the words of Wood himself when he says, Once the student, with the help of scaffolding, masters the task, the scaffold can then be removed and the student can complete the test on his or her own. The six skills of effective scaffolding, starting with one, are Text representation. This form lets students extend their understandings and apply them in novel format. For example, a student may have a hard time understanding an article about the agricultural migrant experience in the U.S. The student can read the article and possibly understand the main points, but be confused by foreign words. Try reading in a large group, or maybe in a small group of students. Sometimes students don't recognize words because they did not read it correct in their head. Reading it to them might make them realize, hey, I do know what that means. Number two, metacognitive development. This is when teachers provide strategies for students to help them understand. Giving examples of what a good reader does can help other students follow the same strategy. Three, schema building. This is a skill where students look at a certain topic from a larger picture, looking at it broadly and then slowly getting more in depth. Contextualization. This is when a student has a difficult time understanding the textbook. When a textbook is too hard for a student to understand, it is important that the teacher manipulates the text in a way to help a student better understand. Visualizations and focus questions are some examples of these. Bridging. Bridging is great. This is where we have students connect to the theme of the topic we're talking about. This allows the student to combine his life experience with his or her educational learning. Modeling. This is where teachers help students better understand your ideas by showing examples of what the teacher is expecting. Showing examples and giving rubrics to help students see exactly what you want from them. According to my Godspeed, much of the importance of learning by the child occurs through social interaction with a skillful tutor. The tutor may model behaviors and provide verbal instructions for the child. Vygotsky refers to this as cooperative or collaborative dialogue. The child seeks to understand the actions or instructions provided by the tutor, then internalizes information, using it to guide or regulate their own performance. Schaefer gives the example of a young girl who is given her first jigsaw. Alone, she performs poorly in attempting to solve the puzzle. The father then sits with her and describes or demonstrates some basic strategies, such as finding all the corner edge pieces and provides a couple of pieces for the child to put together herself, and offers encouragement when she does so. According to Vygotsky, this type of social interaction involving cooperative or collaborative dialogue promotes cognitive development. Vygotsky's theory places a lot of importance on our environment and how we interact with it, but it also places some of the pressure on us. Vygotsky says that we are born with certain mental capacity that allows us to do certain things. These lower mental functions, as he calls them, will eventually develop into higher mental functions. For example, look at this baby trying to reach out for an object. It will soon learn that reaching out for this object can symbolize its need for the object. And as it grows on to become an older baby and eventually a toddler, it will learn to use this lower mental function and develop it into a higher one to signal its need for something. Vygotsky also notes that lower functions are things like attention and memory, while higher functions expand off the early lower ones. For example, in this first math problem, the student is attempting to solve one. In the second picture of a math problem, the student eventually will develop higher math skills and be able to solve more complex problems. The interaction that we have with the environment is the biggest role player in this, and different cultures have different tools of intellectual adaptation. We create m mind maps, like this cartoon for example. Another example is that here in the United States, we have these mind maps that we create. While in other less developed countries, they use other hooks for memorization. For example, maybe rubbing a smooth stone to help remember a certain piece of information. The final example of this kind of development that Vygotsky notes that I would like to show is with this baby, who as a younger child will immediately eat her cake on her birthday 
before being sung to. As she grows older, she will eventually learn to wait before indulging herself in the delicacy, turning her lower mental function of immediately going to eat into a higher one of learning to wait until after they sing happy birthday and that she blows out the, camp, the candles. Vygotsky says that the ultimate role of culture is to turn our lower functions into the higher ones, because that is when we reach full development. In Vygotsky's view, the acquisition of language is a crucial part of cognitive development. After children acquire language, they don't just go through a set series of stages. Rather, their cognitive development depends on interactions with adults, cultural norms, and their environmental circumstances. Vygotsky also pointed out that children use language to control their own behavior. After children learn and acquire language skills, they begin to engage in private speech. They first use language to talk to themselves out loud, and then, as they grow older, they begin to silently give themselves instructions on what is right or wrong. Speaking has thus developed along two lines, the line of social communication and the line of private or inner speech, by which the child mediates and regulates his or her activity through their thoughts. This is not to say that thinking cannot take place without language, but rather that it is mediated by it and thus develops to a much higher level of sophistication.